This video is on the red blood cells or RBCs. The other name for RBCs is erythrocytes. Erythros means red colored and cytes means cells. So together they form the red blood cells. Now we know that blood is a fluid like material or to be more specific semi fluid. It has got a watery part and a solid part. The watery part is called plasma and the solid part is called formed elements or blood cells. So the first type of formed elements or the blood cells is RBCs. And in this video we are going to discuss about the morphology of RBCs. Morphology includes the shape, size and structure of RBCs. So first we will discuss about the shape. Now to say about the shape of RBCs, it is by concave and disc shape with a thin center and a thick periphery. So by concave or concavity means a depression in the center and thickness at the ends. So it is biconcave that means both these sides have this concavity in the center and it is very thick in the periphery and it is disc shaped. The center portion is pale. Pale means it is very light color and that occupies approximately one by third of cells diameter. Now there are few advantages of this biconcave and disc shape and we'll see about the advantages of this shape. The first and foremost advantage of this shape is that RBCs can easily squeeze through the capillaries while passing without getting damaged. Now the capillaries are the smallest blood vessels in our body with the smallest diameter. So through these smallest blood vessels RBCs can easily move without getting damaged or the stretching or whatever changes happen in the diameter of the blood vessels does not going to affect the shape of RBCs and it is because of this biconcave and flexible nature of RBCs that gives this ability to move through the blood capillaries. It provides larger surface area for absorption as well as removal of different substances. And the last advantage is that it helps in equal and rapid diffusion of oxygen and other substances into the interior of the cell. So these are the advantages of having a biconcave shape. This is a picture representing the side view and the top view of RBCs. The side view shows the biconcavity of RBCs. It's very exact and very precise in the picture with a thin center and a thick periphery. The two micrometer specified in the side represents its thickness. Now, when viewing through the microscope, we see the top view, which is the second picture and in that top view it is very clear that the center portion is very pale and the peripheral portion is very thick it is dark colored now the measurement seen at its side that is 7.5 micrometers is the diameter of a normal RBC so coming to the size or the dimensions of red blood cells its diameter is 7.2 to 7.5 micrometer. Its thickness in the center, as I specified before, that is the center portion is thin and the peripheral portion is thick. So the center thickness is 1 micrometer and peripheral thickness is 2.2 micrometers. Surface area 120 square micrometer and volume is 80 to 90 cubic micrometer. So these are the dimensions of RBC and 
the thing which should keep in our mind is the diameter send point 2 to send point 5 micrometer and RBCs with this normal size especially normal diameter are called normocytic RBCs you have to keep this term in mind because it is needed in many other contexts to say about the structure of RBCs RBCs are non-nucleated that means the DNA material the genetic material is totally absent nucleus is absent and it is in the nucleus DNA is seen so there is no genetic material in the RBCs and the only mammal having a nucleated RBC is camel all other cell organelles like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, etc. are totally absent. So, we know that inside a cell, the powerhouse or the organelle that gives the energy or produces energy for the functioning of the cell is mitochondria. Since in RBC, mitochondria is totally absent, the energy is produced from glycolytic process or glycolysis it is totally anaerobic glycolysis then the cell membrane contains a contractile protein called spectrin that maintains the shape and flexibility of RBC membrane so it is the presence of this protein that gives the biconcave shape to RBCs along with that the flexible membrane so it can easily squeeze through the blood capillaries and if this contractile protein is absent it leads to another condition called spirocytosis where the RBCs assume a spherical shape instead of the biconcave shape. The presence of hemoglobin gives reddish color to RBCs and RBCs with normal hemoglobin content will be having a normal color and such RBCs are called normochromic RBCs. Normo indicates normal and chromic indicates color. And apart from these features, there is one more specific thing to mention about the structure of RBC and that is it contains specific blood group antigen. We know that each and every human in this universe have got one type of blood group right so from individual to individual the blood group differs and this difference in blood group is due to the presence of a specific type of blood group antigen and about this context we'll be dealing in another video so stay tuned Now this is a specific property of RBCs that is called Rulex formation. It is the piling up of RBCs one above the other like a pile of coins. Like if we stack one coin above the other it will give a pile or like a pillar like structure. So likewise the RBCs have the ability to climb one above the other and maintain a pile, piling material. So it is a, pre a specific property of RBCs and it is entirely different from another term called agglutination. Now in this picture you can see that the RBCs have piled up one above the other. Now here in this picture the RBCs are just piled up and you can see there is no chemical reaction or any sort of reaction between each and every RBCs that have been piled up. Now this is entirely different from another material or another condition called agglutination where the cells clump together or stick together. And this term agglutination is a term that specifies a chemical reaction or some sort of reaction between an antigen and an antibody. They are opposite players. 
so when an antigen combines with its specific antibody they will stick together forming an irreversible reaction and that leads to the condition called agglutination or sticking together but in this case that is in the case of rulex formation the rbcs aren't sticking together they are not sticking at all they are just piling up one above the other and it's for some amount of time or it's just for a specific time when the circulation comes back to its normal pace the rulex formation will split up rbcs will go back to their normal functions and rulex formation is the basis of a particular diagnostic tool called esr that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate coming to the functions of rbcs the first and foremost function of rbcs is transport of oxygen from lungs to tissues and transport of carbon dioxide from tissues back to lungs and this uh, function is the function of hemoglobin too the next function of rbc or to be more specific the function of hemoglobin is the buffering action in blood that is maintenance of acid base balance that is called buffering action the rbcs contain an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase that helps in the combination of carbon dioxide with water and splitting back of carbon dioxide and water it's a reversible reaction and that reaction is very important for the formation of bicarbonates and also for the transportation of carbon dioxide through the blood and the formation of bicarbonates and h plus ions gives the buffering action of rbcs or hemoglobin to the blood about which we'll be dealing in some other context and the last function of rbcs is blood group determination because already i have said that the rbc membrane contains specific blood group antigens so these blood group antigens help in the determination of blood group so these are the functions of rbcs and this much about the morphology of rbcs so thank you